Today we're gonna have the subject, I believe in America it's called Aerial Unidentified uh, Phenomena. We refer to it properly with my guest I have here, UFOs. And why UFOs? Well, I'm a believer, so is my guest. But first, let me introduce my own story. I am a believer not only because I think it's practical, the universe is so big, there must be life out there. Uh, to be honest, I think there is a lot of life out there. But uh, in the summer of 2013, I was with two uh, sisters uh, coming back from a, a, a dinner party we had. And we were uh, supposed to, to bring one of the girls to the train. And we were quite early, so we did a little detour. I saw an orange ball coming. And I thought it was a, a light ball. So I attended the, the girls to it. I said, look, there's a, there's a light ball coming our way. But instead of that light ball coming down, this light ball was coming our direction and stayed in the air. When it came in the neighborhood of us, uh, I suddenly uh, saw not one light, I saw uh, many, many lights. I think four or six orange yellow lights flashing in and out. And I was amazed by it. I was, I, was, I was amazed. The girls next to me were scared also. Because what happened was that we couldn't identify what it was. Was it, was it a drone? Was it a helicopter? Was it a plane? It was complete silence. And it, 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 it hovered above us. It shot away in the direction of the sea and it was gone. And we were totally flabbergasted. I have no other word for it. We missed the train, of course. We went to the pub and had a, a drink and uh, we had two drinks, to be honest. With me is Arjan and Arjan uh, lives in the, the middle of Holland. And Arjan is also, just like me, I, I, I mean, useless to say that I was a believer in the phenomenon of, of UFOs uh, since then. Arjan is a believer also, and I, uh, I heard from you in, in the, 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 the talk we had before we, we met each other that you never had seen a, a sighting, but you are a believer. Can you explain to me uh, why you are a believer, Arjan? Well, to be honest, it actually is kind of logical thinking about how things are, how things happened in the in the past. I was never raised religious, so I wasn't uh, rooted in beliefs that made me think in a specific direction. So I started developing that on my own. Once I grew older, you see buildings like the, the pyramids, uh, you read books about how they were made, you start to question it. And some explanations are aliens build it. And then you delve into that information and you try to develop yourself and you start to wonder, yes, are we alone in the universe? Well, it's so big, it's so fast, and it's hard for me to believe that we are. And because of the things that I read, uh, you start to, to develop your own theories. But I do believe that they are there and they have been here, yeah. For a long time already. Probably. Probably right. more than 4,000 years BC. Yeah, yeah definitely. Can you have, do you have a specific, I mean, you mentioned the, the, the pyramids. Uh, I heard there is a map somewhere. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Well, there's a, a map, the map of Piri Reis. He was an old cartographer who lived in the 16th century. Yeah. And he made a map of Antarctica, the continent, um, when it wasn't underneath the ice. He drew that map based on older maps that he found. And no one knows where those maps are nowadays or how he got them. Um, but the map shows Antarctica not under ice. But it is proven, uh, even by the US government, that Antarctica has been under ice for over more than five to 6,000 years. So that started at about 4,000 BC. Yeah. He lived in the 16th century, the time in between. How could he have had a map that was accurate in showing that continent uh, with rivers winding out to the oceans? So there must have been a civilization earlier that made maps like that. And had knowledge of the fact that there was Antarctica. Yeah, and there were even uh, signs that it was based on uh, longitude and stuff like that. So it, 
could have been from the air because mm -hmm. that is a technique that we only discovered in what was it the 19th century 18th or 19th century so or it has been lost for a period of time or there was a civilization that had it mm. and we just recently discovered it so that always makes you wonder okay what is that based on so uh, so you have you have the pyramids which are minimum unexplainable because also there are pyramids in in mexico and yeah. uh, in other continents you have you have this map of Piri Rice was his name. Yeah. Uh, are there any more examples which made you believe there are there's more life outside planet Earth? Well, there's there's loads. But for instance, one is um, an old civilization called the Sumerians, and they acquired a vast amount of knowledge about uh, irrigational systems, accountancy. Uh, the written word, they were the first to use the written word. Um, and they said they acquired it from the gods. Like not a god, but the gods uh, who came down from the heavens. Um, which also makes you wonder, how did they, was that true? Did they, they, not, they did not discover the knowledge on their own, they admit it. Yeah. They received it from someone who came down. And of course that's a very ancient example. But if you look at uh, modern times, all the sightings, and now even the United States government is willing to investigate all their UFO sightings. Uh, the Pentagon has this summer uh, admitted that they had encounters with UFOs uh, during uh, exercises uh, for the coast of San Diego. I think when uh, experienced fighter pilots have a testimony about uh, UFO sightings and describe exactly what they are, are, are what they are, uh, what's happened to them. I think there must be something going on. Uh, yeah. Do you have an explanation why we kept a little bit in the dark about this subject? Well, I think mainly because mass hyster hysteria could break out. I mean, if you told the world okay there are aliens there are multiple alien species they have been here we have made contact with them i think a lot of people would go bananas Scare, yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they, war of the worlds is yeah. coming to you part three <laughs> well do you think there is a reason why we should be scared or is is, is, is this just baloney Nah, i think you, you could be scared but healthy scared we don't know uh, who they are, how they are going to behave towards us. We have good guys, we have bad guys here on this planet. And life from outer space, it could go both ways. So should you be scared? I think in basis, no, because if they come here and they try to contact us, um, who knows, maybe they come back and bring us new uh, scientific developments, yeah. like they did thousands yeah. of years ago. Or they could come here and conquer the world. I think it would be a piece of cake for them. Uh, and they probably should be more scared of us, uh, knowing our nature. All right, people, that's it for today. Thank you.